Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to ask a question. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. I have used Card Conduit multiple times already. I always use them to get the best value for my extra cards. I get fair prices for my cards and they save me tons of time. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They give you the best price for your cards. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list, even with Card Conduit's fees. Card Conduit also optimizes buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of the card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Tonight we are doing no ban list EDH. This is EDH cranked to 11 to see just how broken we can make a deck. So let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First we have our Mox Pearl patron Sean, pounding Golos, Tireless Pilgrim with Lutri the Spell Chaser as the companion. This is a storm deck looking to get Grizzlebrand into play quickly, draw a bunch of cards, and then win with a variety of combos. His opening hand contains a Witchclaw Talisman, Chain of Vapor, Silence, Mana Crypt, Tarnished Citadel, Pact of Negation, and his Lena Mulligan is a Mox Diamond. Next, we have Ryan, Pauling Thada Adele, Acquisitor. This is a meta-busting deck trying to steal other players' powerful artifacts that are always present in no band list games. His opening hand contains a Chain of Vapor, Craft Digger's Cage, Mana Confluence, Arcane Laboratory, Black Lotus, Brainstorm, and a Time Twister. Next, we have Nick, Pouting Send Triplets. This deck also seeks to leverage its commander and steal powerful cards from its opponents. His opening hand contains a Cursed Totem, Phantasmal Image, Mana Drain, Mox Diamond, Forbidden Orchard, Bloodstained Mire, and a Spell Pierce. Finally, we have John, Pouting Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. This deck seeks to chain extra turn spells together while leveraging its commander for huge creatures. His opening hand contains a Rejuvenating Springs, Mindbreak Trap, Dispel, Windswept Teeth, Besaju Who Endures, and his Lena Mulligans are Nezahal Primal Tide and Apex Devastator. Without further ado, let's kick off this powerful plethora of pugilistic pachyderms. Sean had the most banned cards in the command zone and gets to start us off. Sean draws a card for turn and plays a Tarnished Citadel. He casts a Mana Crypt. He taps his Citadel to help cast Wishclaw Talisman. He passes. Ryan draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts a Black Lotus. He cracks his Lotus to cast his commander, Thada Adele, Aquisitor. He taps Mana Confluence to cast Graft Digger's Cage. He ends the turn. Nick draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Bloodstained Mire. He taps a Forbidden Orchard, giving John a 1-1 Spirit to help cast Cursed Totem. He ships the turn. John draws and plays a Rejuvenating Springs. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with the Spirit. Sean takes it, and John passes the turn. During his upkeep, Sean loses his Mana Crypt Flip and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to John. He casts Wheel of Fortune. Each player discards their hand and draws 7. He casts Mox Pearl. He casts Black Lotus. He ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with Thada Adele. Sean takes it and Thada triggers. Ryan searches Sean's library and exiles a Time Vault. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Time Vault. He ends his turn. Nick draws and casts Mox Opal. He pays 2 life to cast a Taxian Probe targeting Ryan. He looks at Ryan's hand and draws a card. He casts Demonic Tutor, fetching up a card into his hand. He plays Talarian Academy. He casts Time Walk, getting an extra turn. He passes the turn to himself. Nick draws and taps Forbidden Orchard, giving John a spirit to help cast Praetor's Grasp, targeting Sean. He fetches up a card from Sean's library into exile face down. He ships the turn. John draws and activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Nick. He casts a Mana Crypt. He moves to combat and attacks Nick with the spirit. Nick takes it, and in his second main phase, John casts Amulet of Vigor. He passes. At the end of John's turn, Sean flashes in a Hull Breacher. During his upkeep, Sean wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He casts Defense Grid. In response, Nick flashes in a Hull Breacher of his own. Then Defense Grid resolves. Sean casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing Volcanic Island as an additional cost, fetching up a Talarian Academy onto the battlefield. He casts Windfall. With no answers, Windfall resolves. 
Here's the problem. There are two Hull Breachers on the battlefield. So in this case, due to how Hull Breacher works, Sean gets Nick's treasures and Nick gets Sean's. And each other player chooses who gets their treasure. So Ryan and John each choose to divide the treasures equally. Each player discards their hands, no one draws any cards, and Sean and Nick each create 14 treasures. Next, Sean casts his commander, Golos, Tireless Pilgrim. Golos enters, and Sean fetches up a Caracas onto the battlefield tapped. He pays three and puts his companion, Lutri the Spell Chaser, into his hand. After an interesting turn of events, Sean passes the turn. Ryan draws and moves straight to combat. He attacks John with Thada Adele. John blocks with the Spirit Token, and Ryan ends his turn. Nick draws and activates Wishclaw Talisman. He fetches up a card into his hand and gives Wishclaw to Sean. He casts Mnemonic Betrayal. Each opponent exiles their graveyards. He casts a Black Lotus from Exile. He casts another Black Lotus from Exile. He casts Voltaic Key from Exile. He casts Whir of Invention from Exile, where X equals 2, fetching up a Time Vault onto the battlefield. He activates Voltaic Key, untapping Time Vault. He activates Time Vault to take an extra turn. He presents a loop of using Key to untap Vault and then using Vault to take extra turns. He keeps taking turns until he casts Laboratory Maniac, then attempts to draw from an empty library, and Nick wins the game. In this game, Ryan's opening hand contains an Arcane Signet, Misty Rainforest, Manifold Key, Acquire, Mock Sapphire, Ancient Tomb, and a Jutaxian Probe. Nick's opening hand contains a Cavern of Souls, Godless Shrine, City of Brass, Underground Sea, Exotic Orchard, Mystic Remora, and a Dispel. John's opening hand contains a City of Brass, Amulet of Vigor, Mox Amber, Ottawara Soaring City, Defense Grid, an offer you can't refuse, and his London Mulligan is a dose in the Falling Leaf. Sean's opening hand contains a Mox Emerald, City of Brass, Mana Vault, an offer you can't refuse, Gamble, Time Twister, and an Ancestral Recall. And Ryan gets to start us off. Ryan draws and pays two life to cast Jataxian Probe targeting Sean. He looks at Sean's hand and draws a card. He plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He casts a Mox Sapphire. He taps Ancient Tomb to cast Arcane Signet. He casts a Manifold Key. He ships the turn. Nick draws and plays an Underground Sea. He casts Mystic Remora. He ends his turn. John draws and plays a City of Brass. He taps to help cast Amulet of Vigor. Remora triggers and Nick draws. John passes the turn. Sean draws and plays a City of Brass. He casts Mox Emerald and Nick draws through Remora. He casts a Mana Vault and Nick draws again. Sean ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a snow-covered island onto the battlefield. He casts the One Ring and Nick draws through Remora. The One Ring enters and Ryan gains protection from everything until his next turn. He activates the One Ring, adding a Burden Counter and drawing a card. He activates Manifold Key, untapping the One Ring. He activates the One Ring, adding a Burden Counter and drawing two cards. All through, he ships the turn. During Nick's upkeep, Mystic Remora triggers. In response, Sean taps City of Brass to cast Ancestral Recall. Nick draws through Remora and then Sean draws three. Then Nick pays to keep his Mystic Remora. He draws and casts Mox Diamond, discarding Godless Shrine. He plays an Exotic Orchard for turn. He casts a Mana Ball. He casts a Ristic Study. He casts a Manifold Key. Finished up, he passes the turn to John. John draws and plays an Ottawara, Soaring City. He taps his City of Brass to help cast his commander, Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. Ristic triggers and Nick draws. He casts Mox Amber. Ristic and Mystic trigger and Nick draws two. John ships the turn. Sean draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He taps the City of Brass and his Forbidden Orchard, giving Nick a spirit to help cast Lotho, Corrupt Sheriff, paying the Ristic tax. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan loses two life from the One Ring. He draws and plays an Academy Ruins. He activates the One Ring, adds a Burden Counter, and draws three cards. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast a Choir, targeting Sean. Mystic and Ristic trigger, and Nick draws two. In response, John casts an Offer You Can't Refuse, targeting a Choir, and Nick draws two again. In response, Ryan casts Force of Will for its alternate cost, paying a life and exiling a blue card, targeting Offer. Ristic, Mystic, and Lotho trigger. Sean loses a life and creates a treasure, and Nick draws two. In response, John casts Flusterstorm, with all copies targeting a choir. Ristic, Mystic, and Lotho trigger. Sean loses a life and creates a treasure, and Nick draws two more. Flusterstorm resolves, a choir is countered, and Force counters offer. Next, Ryan activates Voltaic Key, targeting the One Ring, untapping it. He activates the One Ring, adding a Burden Counter, and drawing four cards. All through, he passes the turn. During his upkeep, Nick pays to keep his Remora. During his draw step, he takes a damage through his Mana Ball. He draws and casts a Mox Pearl. He plays a Talarian Academy for turn. He casts Voltaic Key. Lotho triggers and Sean loses a life and creates a treasure. Nick activates Manifold Key, untapping his Mana Ball. He taps his Vault and adds three colorless, then untaps it with Voltaic Key. He taps it for three more to help cast an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. In response, Sean sacrifices his treasures and floats mana. Then Cyclonic Rift resolves and each of Nick's opponents bounce all of their non-land permanents. Next, Nick casts Time Walk. In response, Sean casts an Offer You Can't Refuse. Ristic and Remora trigger and Nick draws two. In response, Nick casts Dispel, targeting Offer. 
In response, John pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, targeting Dispel. Ristic and Remora trigger, and Nick draws two. With nothing else, Misstep counters Dispel, Offer counters Time Walk, and Nick creates two treasures. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with a Spirit. With nothing else, Nick passes, discarding to hand size. John draws and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He taps the City of Brass to cast his commander, Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy, paying the Ristic tax. He casts a Mox Amber, and Nick draws from Ristic and Remora. He casts an Amulet of Vigor. Remora and Ristic trigger, John pays for Ristic, and Nick draws from Remora. John ends his turn. Sean draws and casts Mox Emerald, Mystic and Ristic trigger, and Nick draws two. Sean casts Mana Vault, and Nick draws two more. Sean taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Ryan a Spirit to cast Dark Ritual. Nick draws two from Ristic and Remora, and then Sean adds three black. He exiles Selfish Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a green. He casts Wishclaw Talisman, and Nick draws two. He activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to John. He casts Entomb, and Nick draws two. Then Sean fetches up a Grizzlebrand into his graveyard. He taps the City of Brass to help cast Time Walk. Mystic and Ristic trigger, Sean pays for Ristic, and Nick draws from Remora. In response, Nick casts Spell Pierce, countering Time Walk. Denied an extra turn, Sean passes the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and casts Cyclonic Rift, targeting Ristic Study. Mystic and Ristic trigger, and Nick draws two. In response, Nick casts Silence. Silence resolves, locking out opponents from casting spells this turn. Then Cyclonic Rift resolves, and Nick bounces Ristic Study to his hand. Locked out of casting anything else, Ryan ships the turn. During his upkeep, Nick lets his Remora die. During his draw step, he takes a damage from his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he casts a Chrome Mox and printing Ristic Study. He casts Ranger Captain of Eos, declining to search as it enters. He sacrifices Ranger Captain, locking out opponents from non-creature spells this turn. He casts a Time Vault. He activates Voltaic Key, untapping his Time Vault. He activates Time Vault, getting an extra turn. He presents a loop of using key to untap vault and taking extra turns. He does this over and over, drawing his deck. He casts Thassa's Oracle. Oracle enters, and Nick wins the game. In this game, Nick's opening hand contains a Time Vault, Academy Rector, Time Twister, Mystic Remora, Underground Sea, Flooded Strand, and his London Mulligan is Aspire of Industry. John's opening hand contains a Mox Emerald, Yava Mai Coast, Elvish Spirit Guide, Brainstorm, Mental Misstep, Seed Time, and his London Mulligan is a Veil of Summer. Sean's opening hand contains an Ad Nauseam, Chrome Mox, Reanimate, Mana Confluence, and his three London Mulligans are Volcanic Island, Verdant Catacombs, and Simeon Spirit Guide. Ryan's opening hand contains a Dress Down, Soul Ring, Acquire, Black Lotus, Mana Vault, Ottawara, Soaring City, and a Copy Artifact. And Nick gets to start us off. Nick draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts a Mystic Remora. In response, not wanting a repeat of last game, John pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, countering Remora. Nick ends his turn. John draws and casts Mox Emerald. He plays a Yava Maya Coast as his land for turn. He exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a green. He taps Yava Maya Coast to help cast his commander, Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. He ships the turn. Sean draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts Chrome Mox and printing Reanimate. He passes to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Snow Covered Island. He casts Black Lotus. He cracks the Lotus to help cast his commander, Thada Adele, Aquisitor. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Mana Vault. He ends the turn. Nick draws and plays an Underground Sea. He casts Witch Claw Talisman. He passes. John draws and taps Yava Mai Coast to cast Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. He plays a Windswept Teeth for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Time Twister. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their libraries and draws seven. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Verdant Catacombs. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with Kennen. Sean takes it, and John passes. Sean draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He casts a Time Vault. In response, Ryan casts Commandeer for its alternate cost, exiling two blue cards targeting Time Vault. Commandeer resolves, and Ryan gains control of Time Vault. With Time Vault still in the stack, John casts Rapid Hybridization, targeting Thada Adele. Thada is destroyed, and Ryan creates a 3-3 Frog Lizard. Then Time Vault resolves. Sean casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts his commander, Golos, Tireless Pilgrim. Golos triggers, and Sean fetches up a Talarian Academy onto the battlefield tapped. He ends the turn. Ryan draws and plays an Inventor's Fair. He casts Voltaic Key. In response, Sean pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, countering the key. The table narrowly missed disaster, and Ryan follows up with a Manifold Key. All out of interaction, Key resolves. Ryan activates Key, untapping Time Vault. He taps Time Vault to take an extra turn. He presents a loop of using Manifold Key to untap Time Vault and activating Time Vault to take an extra turn. During his extra turns, he recasts his commander, Thada Adele. And since each opponent has an island, he attacks his opponents each turn. They all eventually take 21 commander damage, die, and Ryan wins the game. In this game, John's opening hand contains an Urza Saga, Nezahal Primal Tide, Mox Diamond, Command Tower, Elvish Spirit Guide, Cephalid Coliseum, and a Soul Ring. Sean's opening hand contains a Mana Crypt, Bullets of Citadel, Forbidden Orchard, Necropotence, Swan Song, Lotho Corrupt Sheriff, and a Demonic Consultation. Ryan's opening hand contains a Cyclonic Rift, Mirage Mirror, Mox Sapphire, Talarian Academy, Spell Pierce, and his London Mulligans are Tezzeret the Seeker and Damping Sphere. Nick's opening hand contains the City of Traitors, Force of Will, Windfall, Wishclaw Talisman, Graftigger's Cage, Underground Sea, and his London Mulligan as a Tinker. 
and John gets to start us off. John draws and plays a command tower. He casts Black Lotus. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Urza Saga. He exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a green. He casts a Soul Ring. He cracks Black Lotus to help cast that turn one. Nezahal, Primal Tide. Off to an amazing start. John passes. Sean draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He casts a Mana Crypt. Nezahal triggers and John draws a card. Sean taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Ryan a Spirit to cast Demonic Consultation. Nezahal triggers and John draws. Consultation resolves and Sean names Black Lotus. He exiles the top six, then exiles, and exiles, and exiles until he reveals Black Lotus, putting it into his hand. He casts Black Lotus and John draws from Nezahal. He casts Necropotence and John draws again. Sean activates Necropotence 21 times, paying 21 life and exiling 21 cards, going down to one card in his library. He moves to his end step and puts the exiled cards into his hand. He passes, discarding to hand size, exiling the discarded cards. Ryan draws and plays a Tolarian Academy. He casts Mox Sapphire and John draws from Nezahal. He casts Cyclonic Rift, targeting Nezahal. Nezahal triggers and John draws. In response, John activates Nezahal, discarding three cards. Nezahal is exiled and Cyclonic Rift fizzles. Ryan moves to combat and attacks Nick with his spirit. Nick takes it and Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Nezahal re-enters the battlefield tapped. Nick draws, plays an underground sea, and passes. John draws and moves straight to combat. He attacks Sean with Nezahal. Sean takes it and in his second main phase, John casts Ancestral Recall, targeting Sean. In response, Sean pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, targeting Ancestral. Nezahal triggers and John draws. In response, Nick casts Dispel, targeting Mental Misstep. Nezahal triggers and, in response, Sean casts Force of Negation for its alternate cost, exiling Swan Song, targeting Ancestral. Nezahal triggers and John draws again. In response, John casts Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. Still in response, Nick casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling a blue card, targeting Force of Negation. Nezahal triggers and John draws again. With no other answers, Force of Will counters Force of Negation, Dispel counters Mental Misstep, John draws from Nezahal, then Ancestral Recall resolves. Sean attempts to draw from an empty library and loses the game. The table admires Sean's Power 9 on display, and then John passes the turn. Ryan draws and moves to combat. He attacks Nick with a Spirit. Nick takes it, and Ryan ships the turn. Nick draws and plays a City of Traitors. He casts Wishclaw Talisman, and John draws from Nezahal. He casts Scraft Digger's Cage, and John draws again. Nick ends his turn. John draws and moves to combat. He attacks Nick with Nezahal. Nick takes the hit, and John passes the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Snow-Covered Island. He casts his commander, Thada Adele Acquisitor. He passes. Nick draws and activates Wishclaw Talisman, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Ryan. He casts a Mystic Remora, and John draws from Nezahal. In response, John hard casts Fierce Guardianship, countering Remora. Nick passes the turn. John draws and moves straight to combat. He attacks Nick with Nezahal. Nick takes it, and in his second main phase, John casts Mox Opal. He floats mana and then casts Dramatic Reversal, untapping his non-land permanents. He casts Capture of Jing Xiao, getting an extra turn. He casts his commander, Kennen, Bonder Prodigy. He passes the turn to himself. John draws and moves to combat. He attacks Nick with everything. Nick takes it, and in his second main phase, John plays a Yava Maya Coast. He casts Paradox Engine. He casts War of Invention, where X equals two. Paradox Engine triggers, and John untaps his non-land permanents. War resolves and John fetches up a Time Vault onto the battlefield. He casts Tezzeret the Seeker. Engine triggers and John untaps. He activates Time Vault to take an extra turn. He presents a loop of using Tezzeret's first ability or Paradox Engine to untap Time Vault and take infinite turns. He attacks his opponents over and over with Nezahal until they die and John wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what an awesome set of games tonight. Congrats to Nick, Sean, and Ryan on their wins. They each showed a different take on No Ban List Commander that highlights the explosive possibilities of this format. We love playing this format so much because it lets us do even more broken things than we already do in CDH. The most valuable card in tonight's games, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Time Ball. Whether you play your own or steal one from an opponent's stack, getting to take infinite turns is a pretty solid way to win Commander games. Even though the actual win con varies, Time Vault is usually what gets you there. Taking all of the turns with Time Vault ensures that you can get to your combo with the perfect hand to protect it. A big thanks again to the No Banless EDH Discord server for their help with this video. If you want to check out No Banless EDH or play some games yourself, check out the link in the description below. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.